Welcome, welcome, welcome. I'm so looking forward to talking to you today. I've been thinking about this for a really long time. Like most of us, we're having a lot of feelings and a lot of mixed bag, right? And this incredible situation that we're in. And I feel like I don't want to gloss over it and I want to address it. And today we're going to talk about cash flow resiliency. And I think this is a critical time when probably a lot of us don't feel like talking about money and are feeling like so many people are being impacted in various ways, we're being impacted. No one's exempt. No one is exempt from this global pandemic that we're in. And I don't wanna spend a lot of time on it, but what I do wanna do is acknowledge it because what's happened is that no matter what we think is going on spiritually or karmically or globally or physical world reality, what's happening, the truth is, is that each one of us has had our baseline shifted on, and we're living on shifting sands, right? And what I mean by that is the normal way you go through life, you have this set of expectations. There's kind of a set of knowns. There's a, a a way that you've known life to be that you can kind of count on and that is reliable, right? And some of us might even feel like that's a bit mundane and boring, right? I'm one of those people who daily life gets to me actually, which is why I go rushing off to go into the bush to get re-energized by being in the wild where things are unstructured yet everything knows its role and its place. And we're in that time where everything's been shaken up a lot of distractions removed and a lot more new input coming in. And so when I talk about our baseline, it's our sense of knowing that we're okay, life is okay, and how we can kind of expect our day to unfold. And that's all changed. And the reason I think it's really important to acknowledge that is one, we need to take greater care of ourselves than we probably ever have. Most of us aren't good at that in the first place. And the second piece of that is, is that our clients that we serve as feminine entrepreneurs, the clients that we serve, their needs have shifted too. And so I want to talk about this idea of how to create cash flow resiliency and feel comfortable talking about money at a time when money's money and health, those topics are so hot and high right now. Like this is a hot topic alert, right? And People are feeling stressed and strained. Some people are making more money during this time. Some people have their incomes completely dead in the water and stopped. A lot of people have lost jobs. They've been furloughed. We've actually reached a point in the US where we're almost back to the level of unemployment around the level of the Great Depression. And so on the one hand, we really need to acknowledge and own that people are hurting and that times have changed. On the other, and that's not an opportunity though, to make up a new money story or to make it mean something about our world or the US or our government and get into all the anxiety and the angst about that. Because on the other hand, what's available to us is more of a blank canvas. And I fully believe with my whole heart that feminine entrepreneurs, are holding the keys to the queendom at this time. I mean this with every fiber of my being and I'm finding my own challenges too, right? Life is not all rosy over here. I want you to know that I'm having my own challenges because my edges are being pushed and I live on the edge. So I can only imagine how this feels for people that aren't used to living on the edge. And that means that we may be the income bearers. Like this might be the opportunity in your family, in your circle of care, where you become the profound breadwinner because you have the agility, you have the creativity, and you have the opportunity. And by opportunity, yes, we're on shifting sands and yes, our baseline has moved. But the opportunity that's really in front of us as women who are coming into our own rising and leading. 
We need to move beyond just that there's a movement that's acknowledging and supporting us and that that energetic dynamic is out of there, out there. But we need to stop being the ones who are over giving and under receiving. And I really believe that this is an important pattern and this is a pivotal time that we can shift and break that pattern because What's available to us now, like never before, is access to our feminine superpowers because our wealth is based on our creativity and that can never be taken away from us. And it doesn't matter if you're a creative soul inside a very large corporation. I was one of those people for a really long time. If you're an artist or you're a healer or you're a coach or you're an expert or you're a mystic or you're a sage or a guide, it doesn't matter. Because what is wanting to happen now is us to align these optimal blueprints of healing, of transformation that each one of us carries our own code for, to bring that forward into the world, but to also align it with our financial destiny and taking care and tending to our own financial needs Because this is the paradigm, ladies, that we live in. We live in a paradigm where giving and receiving and exchanging of money is expected, and it's how the flow works inside this paradigm. Do we have to be bound by all the rules of the traditionally masculine money-making system? No, we don't. I haven't been for a very long time, which is why I'm sitting here financially free, and I'm still financially free, and even with all the economic downturn and the crazy ride the stock market is on, because I do have investments, not all of them are dependent on that, right? I'm a bit financially immune because I intended to set myself up that way, and I have a team that knows how to do that, and you can too, but we can't self-actualize in the fullest way that this opportunity is calling us forward, if we remain disempowered around money and around cash flow in our businesses. And so I hope you'll come on this ride with me today because I'm going to take you through five steps in how you can create financial resiliency for yourself and for your business. Because we have this time to really reintegrate in a different way. There's this time now. I don't even know where we are on the curve. I don't even know what the curve looks like. I'm not even going to engage it. I'm going to keep scanning my horizon and go, what's needed now? What's needed now? What can I do that matches the need now? And those are the powerful questions that I'm asking myself and I'm encouraging you to ask yourself because it's so important at this time. Like this is a time to not be in perfection mode. This is the time to really tune in to the heart of your message and what's the transformational promise that you have and really take a good look and see an honest look, not an overestimating look or an underestimating look, but an honest look. Is what you do needed more than it's ever been needed? I would assert to you that it is. I know my work is because when I tuned in and I felt into, oh my God, nobody wants to talk about money. Women hate talking about money anyway. What am I going to do? And I went, that's exactly why I have to do this. That's exactly why. And because the vision that I was given is that if we make this change and we upgrade our software around money, around cash flow, around revenue and around income and around full anthropy, At this time, as feminine entrepreneurs, and we take advantage of this opportunity, not only do we glide through this crazy radical time, but when and if there ever is a re-emergence or a re-entry, because frankly, I don't think we're going back to life the way it was. I really don't. I think that it will forever be changed, and we have to figure out how to live, learn to live with this virus and rise above this virus. That's what we have to do because we can't keep closing the world down and shutting down the borders. Like that's just like not sustainable no matter what, right? And so we have to figure out how to live with this. So now we have a new variable in our world. Okay, let's get more creative. How can we include it, right? That's not affirming it. That's not keeping it here, but our resistance to it makes it persist. 
So how do we include it as a new variable? If we're an animal in a habitat and all of a sudden there's a new variable in the habitat, what are we gonna do with it? We adapt and we become agile. Most importantly, we evolve. And so when we evolve, that's one of the ways that we set ourselves up to create cash flow resiliency and become immune, a bit more immune anyway, to what's going on in the outer world. So we're not riding this income fluctuation with what's going on in the outer world. I actually don't believe in that as a model. And I think one of the ways a lot of women that I know and entrepreneurial women that I know hold money is very focused on what's happening out there. And my job is to help you focus on what's happening in here because your wealth comes from that creative spark that's in here, that place that's unfiltered, unfunneled. That's true. That's radical. That's wild. It's the wild instinct. It's the call to freedom, right? Because you're in this because you wanted a taste of freedom. You wanted to know yourself as being beautifully resourced and you want to be able to directly connect and co-create. You wanted that sense and experience of co-creative reality. That's what I find women's challenge around money is about, is that's what they want to know. Yeah, you want money in the bank. You want to be able to have the beach house. You want to go on vacation, Sonoma trip with the girls, you know, take care of those people inside your circle of care. I know many women who have large circles of care. I know a woman who makes a million dollars a year and she's an introvert because she's got 19 people in her circle of care. She can't stop working. And so it, 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 in a way, actually opens the gateway for her to be out there. Her motivation isn't about whether she feels worthy or not, or it's perfect enough, or did I say it correctly? Instead, she just goes and does because she's being of service to the 19 people in her care. That's a big tribe. That's a big tribe in today's world to take care of, right? So that's why I think this is so important to really be looking at our patterns and our edges that are being pushed. And this is a time to create cash flow resiliency. So let's talk about what that is. Cash flow resiliency is the ability as a business owner to not be so stuck in one groove that you don't know how to shift or be agile or move according to what your clients need. Yes, you want to pay a bit of attention to what's happening out in the world. We want to be compassionate and empathetic about that. I'm not saying any of that. And we want to pray like crazy for all of that. What we don't want to do is resist it. What we don't want to do is what we've been doing as women around money is glossing over, turning away, ignoring it, and not nurturing the thing that is right for us to tend. And I believe our financial destiny, our cash flow, our relationship with money are being surfaced as one of the things to tend. Because here's the thing, when women come through this empowered in this kind of situation, we become the financial influencers of the world and that means everything. Then we change the game. Then putting all your work out into the world is so much easier, but you're gonna have to create your own golden through line. It's not gonna be given to us anymore. There isn't a government that's gonna hand you a way to do this, right? This is about us joining together, linking arms and becoming a new tribe of richly abundant women from the inside out. That's what'll make the difference. Okay, so cash flow resiliency. What it does is it creates a baseline where you know what you know without question. And that from that place, that's your come from, that's your seat of power. You run your business from there. You make your decisions from there. You create a model. That's really where your model lives. What are the core tenets of that model, right? And how do you react and respond to a market without doing a ton of heavy lifting so that you can move quickly? And that's what we're going to go over after the break is the five steps of how to create cash flow resiliency. And so I just want to empower you to really take a breath right now, take some notes during the break and tune into what's the transformation you want the world to have. What's that thing that you do so well and that you offer people? I know for me, it's about offering women a shift in perspective around high currency and money and cash flow and business and revenue and income and return on investment 
and what the energetic definition of all those things are and how we can use those tools in a feminine and empowered way. And this is one of those times we're being called forward. And so I really want to encourage you when it may feel awkward and uncomfortable to put offers out there and to withhold because you're having, you're feeling very empathetic to the fear and the scarcity and the lack that's present, that your clients are experiencing the fear and the scarcity and the lack and the resistance too, right? And we have to become more skilled at walking them through that so that they can get to a place where there's a clearing that they can make a decision that's an empowered decision. We're going to talk about that. That's one of the steps. And I just want to share with you really quickly to hear before we go to break is I've created an offer that's called Creating Cash Flow in Challenging Times. It's free. It's a 10 video series that'll walk you through what we're going to talk about in even more depth and give you tools to work through it on your own. If you go sign up at creatingcash.net, you'll get all the information there. You can drop your email in and you'll get immediate access to all the videos. It's fast, fun, and friendly. The videos are short and you can work through this really quickly so you can discover even more fully for yourself what we're going to talk about today. So with that, stay tuned. When we come back, we're going to talk about the five steps and I can't wait to share this with you. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Richly Abundant Women. I'm Julie Steelman. We are talking about cash flow resiliency. So let's dive into this. I told you before the break that we would talk about the five steps to creating it. So let's walk through this. So the first step is really acknowledging the time that we're in and that maybe a pivot is required. And that is asking us to sort of revision and recalibrate what we're doing in our business. Do you like what you've been doing? Do you love what you've been doing? Have you been feeling the urge to kind of shift a little bit and take it to the next level? I know I constantly feel that, oh my gosh, you know, these messages coming out and they're having impact on people. And then I feel like, how do I take that to the next level? How do I make it clearer? How do I turn that into even more easily of a teaching to receive, right? I'm always kind of engaged in that inquiry. And so when we think about a pivot, a pivot can be questions like, did my market for what I do just change? Are there new people now, right? Did, do I need to shift the way I'm messaging people? Are the lines that are in my profiles on social media, do they fit with the time? Do they express the compassion and the empathy and the sensitivity that I feel? You don't have to go into telling a whole story. I'm not saying that, but sometimes our word choices may come off a bit more aggressive in one time than they do in another and really reconsidering, you know, your message. It's not that you're doing, you may not change what work you do. You may change the way you talk about the work, right? And, or you may change the way that you deliver your work. There's a lot of people that are greatly impacted that um, love to do live events and now have to do everything online or do one-to-one private coaching in an office or are therapists and healers that do creativity and painting with one another and the person live. And now you have to shift online and that changes the dynamic a bit. And so there's a lot of, lot of variables to just be asking yourself about, but you can gain clarity about this quickly. Now, the second step is to really clarify how your client's needs have changed. So here's the thing to be considering is everybody's in a different kind of incubator. We had our freedom to move around. We didn't have family at home, husbands at home, kids at home, elderly parents at home, or maybe completely by yourself and nobody to interact with and no one reflecting back to you. And that's creating a challenge for you. Think about your clients who may be alone and think about your clients who maybe have a house full and they're not used to it. Think about the pressure that that's putting on how they are or their self-care or whatever it is that you do with them, how does that 
elevate and reprioritize their needs, right? Maybe they were looking for love before this pandemic happened and they were already feeling super lonely and now we're in this situation. And so you shift from finding love to how do we work through your loneliness so you stay empowered to be open to love, right? So see how that's the same work, but you pivot. My work, I am in the process of developing a really powerful course around building a business model and cash flow resiliency in a way that's very feminine. And my goal is that from that program, a lot more women are so much more profitable and have so much more cash on hand that we can get to the part about building net worth and creating financial freedom. Because that's what I'm all about is getting women on that continuum. Because a lot of my friends express that's what they want to me. And my focus has been on wealth building, but I've shifted my conversation to cash flow because a lot of them are like raising their hands and asking me, what do I do? All of a sudden, my clients are resistance. They're asking for refunds. They won't book sessions. They're trying to bank their sessions and they don't want to renew. And I don't know what to offer because they feel awkward and uncomfortable about making an offer. What do I do? So it's a very, very interesting conversation. So we have to look at now that my clients are in a new environment, what's the new set of needs that's in their backyard that wasn't there before? And how have their objectives or their priorities shifted? What is it that I do really well, right? And really cultivating that material. How do you get into that material in a rich way? And if you sign up for the creatingcash.net and get the 10 videos, there's a worksheet in there and a video in there exactly showing you how to get into the hearts and minds of your client. You can simply draw it on a piece of paper, draw them as a smiley face, put a heart, put a box in, in the box, really tune into what's in their mind, in the heart, really tune into what they're feeling. Have they shifted their belief set? Have they created new beliefs? A lot of people are making up new belief systems around this. I'm having people really challenged with money stories now, right? Where they had partial money stories, now their money stories really amplified. And so that's a big conversation to address. And so you really want to focus on how is their life different now than before this whole pandemic took place or I want to pause here for a second. I want to talk about this idea of pandemic because I want to get on my soapbox a little bit about this. At the end of the day, this macro global situation that we're in is really something that happens all the time. Not in this way, not in this context, but every single one of us at some point in our life and our business career and our entrepreneurial pathway we're going to have some type of epic upheaval, right? And in the financial world, these economic crazy rides, they call a black swan. And so all of us, we could, in our own personal world, we're coming up on eight years ago, I had my own epic upheaval. My husband dropped dead suddenly of a heart attack, unexpected, no signs, no symptoms, no illnesses, nothing my life was changed forever because of it. That was personal. So we can have a personal pandemic or a personal epic upheaval. We can have an epic upheaval in our business. All of a sudden we wake up and we feel like we have drifted to another star and we no longer want to do the work we were doing and we need to shift and pivot, right? And we have to address that. Maybe our cash flow just all of a sudden, no one's buying what we have. And that means we need to recalibrate. We can also have a local, like something happens in our state or our community that's unique to us that can create that. Something happens in our family that shifts our perspective about things. All that happens all the time. That's called life. And so we can really make up a story about this pandemic, or we can look at it and say, I've made it through radical upheaval in my lifetime before and access our knowing about that bring it to this situation. I was talking with someone yesterday who was sharing a time when she was very called to go to Germany and she found herself in lockdown behind the wall and with a young child at home. Can you imagine? Can you imagine the epic upheaval that that was? 
Like that's a talk about calling on your faith and not having access to the embassy or any way out and not a way to get home in the middle of this political craziness. So these things happen to us all the time. So I want to take the edge off of this a bit, right? I know people are dying. I know people are ill. I know people are impacted financially. I know the global world is deeply impacted. Believe me, I know. I have my hour a day. I cry and pray deeply about it. I'm not trying to minimize that. But I'm also trying to say, let's not be disempowered by it. Let's notice that our life can change in any single moment. And so this is a way for us to strengthen our skill set, our business set, and have agility and build resiliency into our business model. And part of the resiliency comes by not being disempowered all the time when things happen, but by owning the grief and the sorrow that we carry on one hand and the opportunity and the possibility that we carry in the other hand. And in both hands, and we link hands and we move forward. That's resiliency. Okay, so let's go to the third point. Now that we're really feeling into the empathy and the compassion for our clients and how their needs have shifted, knowing that our needs have shifted, it's time to think about designing a really potent offer. And what I mean by a potent offer is that it's relevant to now, that it's timely, most importantly, that it's much needed. Takes maybe something that you've already created, take one step of it. You've got a course, one module, maybe half of a module. Maybe you have a coaching program that you offer for 90 days. Maybe you do a 30 day. I believe in making things fast, fun, and friendly right now, digestible, because people are dealing with so much. Let's not overwhelm their systems. And so, what's the most important offer you could design based on? the second step, which is really deeply clarifying these needs. Or if you have an offer already out there in the world, <clears throat> excuse me, I have a client who's got a very powerful funnel that she's been running since 2017. And we've been having this dialogue. And so she's shifted a bit <clears throat> in her messaging. The offer is still the same, but she shifted in her messaging to address this new set of needs. And she's having great results from it where everything had slowed down. Excuse me, I need to take a drink. <clears throat> where everything had slowed down. And by diving into this new set of needs and the new prioritization and the new beliefs and how that priority had shifted, she said she shifted a bit of her languaging around her webinar and she re-recorded it. And now she's back running again. She's actually going to come through this better off. And then if the needs shift again, she'll adapt again. And that's what we have to do, right? And I think we love this idea of we almost get drunk on it. I've been guilty of this, that we create an offer and we put it out there in the world and like, that's it. And like, everybody will just buy that and I'll just do that and go on autopilot, right? For two, three years. And I think that's one of the things, the tartar that's getting shook loose and that's why this is such a big awakening is because we can't do this on autopilot, right? We can't do this on autopilot and we have to be agile and we have to be focused. And so what's the most potent thing? What's the most powerful thing? What's the most transformative thing you could do for your clients right now and design that into an offer. And I just want to insert something here. A lot of the people that I've been talking to have been preparing to launch and got caught off guard and weren't able to launch. And so if you're one of those who hasn't launched yet, there's a lot of ways that you could do this. You could do something for free, and then that leads people into something that's like sort of a phase two kind of a thing. Again, not super big. And you could also do a membership. If there's something free that you want to do that you want to put out there, call people into a membership. Make the first month free or something to give people a taste of it. And then after that, they have a lifetime member monthly membership fee of X and you could tier it and structure it so that the first 20 people get this price per month for their lifetime and they can cancel any time. And then the next 50 people get this price. And so you can escalate it, escalate it, excuse me. <clears throat> and that's a great way 
to like get your work out in the world, take the edge off of having to do some heavy selling lifting if you aren't used to putting your work out into the world. Now, the, for, for those of you that are generating six and seven figures, I know a lot of you are working with clients and I think one of the things you're going to want to master is really creating a potent reason for people to renew. Like what's that new set of needs and using that to readjust and repurpose the way that you are creating your programs for them and with them and redesign it so that it's re-energized for this time. And that's what I mean by potent is that it's re-energized. We're not on autopilot. We're paying attention to now and we keep scanning the horizon of what our clients need. Okay, so the fourth step that I wanna to talk to you about is we've been diving into what they've been thinking and feeling, right? And this new set of beliefs that have been coming up for them. And I want you to really document that for a couple of reasons because they want you to address it on social media when you share. And you do it in a way that doesn't aggravate, activate, or amplify the fear or the scarcity or the deep impact this is having on how they're feeling. I want you to talk about it from a place of empathy and compassion about how you've been moved and affected or what you're noticing without going into a lot of your own story, right? It's a powerful way to have people resonate and relate to you. And that's, I've been asked a lot. I've actually had a number of experts who have humongous followings and businesses come to me and ask me, what's the key to selling right now? Key to selling right now is to be resonant and invitational. And how you be resonant is that we come down off the mountain. We stop thinking of ourselves as experts. We start thinking of ourselves as pe people, but as leaders who have something powerful to offer. And we start to relate and share in that way. Be creative on social media, do videos, do posts, make memes, be powerful about how you share on social media and do it in an engaging way. And ask people if they want to find out more or take a thought or a philosophy deeper to come on over and talk to you. I'm doing a thing called Sacred Sister Chats. They can book 30 minutes from me. It's not a sales thing. Just want to talk to them. How are you feeling? What's going on? What are you thinking? What's most needed? What's shifted in your world? Get in touch with your people. And then be invitational in the way that you sell. And then use this languaging of how they're feeling when you're in an enrollment conversation so that it feels very grounded and you're being very real with them. And use that languaging in your sales pages, in your emails, where you're inviting people to participate, remembering that there's going to be a bit of resistance there and that there's a, they're feeling a bit afraid and awkward and uncomfortable as well but they know they want something. So you're gonna be dealing with clients in a little bit different way than you have in the past when it comes to sales and enrollment. So I want you to know that and I want you to know how they're feeling. I don't you want you to get into an overgiving or making up a bunch of stories about your work and how you have to give it all away. This is where that sort of starts to come in. I don't want you to do that. I want you to strengthen and to be empowered and to remember to attend to your financial well-being while you help your clients. All right, we're going to take another quick break. And I'm going to give you step five for creating cash flow resiliency. And we'll be right back. So stay tuned, take notes. And I can't wait to share this last step with you. Welcome back to Richly Abundant Women. I'm Julie Steelman. Today we are talking about creating cash flow resiliency. Ah, let's just take a breath. You're going through the five steps to be able to do that. And I want to tap back into step number four. And I just want to dive a little bit deeper into how our clients and our customers are feeling and thinking and that what's natural and normal unfortunately, <laughs> is part of the human condition is to make up 
this, take this time and to personalize it. And so we end up making up more stories. And so we get into more fear and more scarcity and more lack and more resistance. And so there's just a trepidation people have to take action when they can't see the future. And so I think one of the things that is empowering to do in the selling and enrollment process is to be very resonant, meaning that your what you're saying is landing with them, that it carries a vibration of understanding and hope. That's what we want to do. And also being invitational, inviting them to consider the possibility above and beyond what's going on now and giving them an opportunity with you to like take a look into the future with someone who's willing to hold that space for them. Because typically what happens with those of us that are in business as feminine entrepreneurs is that we can see more for our clients than they can see for themselves. And so this is one of those times that that's one of the most beautiful gifts we can give our clients. And so when we're in the sales process or in the sales conversation and in the invitational part of this is being very mindful of taking the pace a bit slower and really speaking with a lot of care and a lot of heart-centered listening and inviting, asking them, is it okay if I continue? Would you like to hear more about how you could? And using words like that and being very mindful still holding to that you're a leader here, but just being very clear that you're being of service to help someone make the decision and create a clearing inside themselves, free from the chatter, from the fear, the resistance that they've been in, however they've been activated by this situation or by any situation at any time, because this is a relevant conversation no matter what. And Deeply diving into the possibility, because everybody's having a spark of possibility at this moment too. And when you can create a clearing and help them navigate that place, you become somewhat of a baseline for them and a place of solidarity for them. And I think that's one of the greatest gifts we can give people right now. We really, really do believe. I'm going to do a whole, probably going to do a series on sales and selling because I am such a profound believer in that is one of the greatest services that we can give to our clients. And I just really believe that about it. I know how it has greatly impacted my ability to serve. And that's one of the first sort of real deep relationships we have with our clients. So be resonant and be invitational. And take all of that that I just said, and also use that on social media. Try all different kinds of forms of things. Try to engage people in conversation, make a free offer. So I just wanna pause here for a second and let you know that if you wanna take this deeper and you really wanna dive into this and go through sort of a whole mini course, I just finished a live version of this. Um, with a group of people that have had some significant success. And you can go to creatingcash.net and put in your email address and you immediately have access to uh, 10 videos that are designed to walk you through how to create cash flow in challenging times, how to dive into their needs and their priorities, creating offers that are much needed, how to create sales conversation around it, how to negotiate if you need a reduction in fees, how to manage your cash flow at this time. It's really a great little program. I created it on the fly based on the needs that I feel my clients were needing. Had a great response. And I've had multiple people put offers out into the world and successfully fill them based on this. And they felt uncomfortable doing it before that because they weren't sure they should be quote selling or talking about money. And it made a big impact for them. And I hope it will for you. So that's a free offer, www.creatingcash.net. Okay, so number five, let's talk about, I always get asked about pricing. Let's talk about pricing. I personally believe pricing is a very personal, intimate thing because I think it represents 
an energetic signature or a thumbprint. I also believe that because I'm such a numbers money person, math, sacred math person and geometry and algebra, I'm extremely fascinated by it and the Fibonacci and all of that, that because I think systems and models are all built on that. Everything is built on that. Our entire universe has math built into it, sacred math built into it, formulas, algorithms, code, right? So I think pricing is really reflective of that and very personal. And I think pricing has to align with your true sense of value, not your perceived sense of value. Your true sense of value is based on the incredible transformation clients can get and the ripple effect through their life of that change taking effect. That's what I mean by true value. So going through this exercise, you want to really identify how what you do has an incredible impact. Like you may be one of those people that the work that you do keeps families together. That's immeasurable impact. And if you get stuck in your head about your perceived value around that, well, you know, uh, maybe I only want to charge 50 bucks for that. I might ask you to rethink what the true value is and take a stand for it. Be willing to take a stand for it. And also encourage you to be creative with pricing. So there's a lot of conversations around brand elasticity. And what if I discount everything now? And then when we're on the other side of this or wherever we are a year from now, I've brought in all these new people, but they perceive me at this price point, but my real price point is this, and that's my business model and how I want to maintain my prices. How do I do that without sort of dismantling my whole model? That's a great question, right? And so I think you have to, that's why I would say redesign the offer and the program for what fits now. So if you're feeling like you need to come a bit down in price, then you need to adjust your programs to fit that, right? You don't give the same six modules that you would normally charge $12.50 for and and give them 24 modules for $5.95, right? Like, don't do that, okay? Give the offer that's relevant now and put a price on it that really matches. And I think that you can do this intuitively, You can work with me privately too, if you want to really tune in to what's the right price and be creative. And so if you're feeling, I think you want your price to be 10 to 25% above what you think is the right price, because I think we always underestimate our value, right? And so we need to make up for that because we need to be profitable so that we can continue to take care of our circle of care. And so you can do things like I'm offering a shelter in place price. I am offering a partial scholarship discount if you if you meet the requirements you decide what those requirements are make it two or three things don't make it hard don't make it hard okay you can also agree to donate proceeds to a charity that's really supporting what's happening right now or the essential workers you know some of them are going to need aftercare after this right they're in their mode and they're in their zone and they're doing their thing but when things slow down Those people are going to need some care, right? So there's a lot of ways that you can do this. And if you want to keep your pricing where it is, then I would encourage you, keep your pricing where it is, okay? Because we don't want you to have any anger or resentment or angst about lowering your price, especially if your pricing is set and it's working, then don't change it. What I would do instead is create a bonus that's much needed that's so relevant to right now that they would pay that price just to get the bonus. You all have that in you and you can all do that regardless of how far along you are in your business. And this applies to six and seven figure people. And this applies to people that haven't gotten launched. This is people that applies to people that just got launched. This is people that had their launch interrupted, (laughs) right? And be creative. You can do memberships so you can start to grow. That gives you monthly income. I think memberships are a great idea right now. It's a great way to create continuity. It's a great way to slowly roll your work out there. 
And I definitely would make an offer up front if you're going to do a membership so that you get at least 10 people in before you start. So there is a group there, right? And get that going. So give yourself time to get that going and then just keep doing it. And you can, and it's a great way if you haven't launched yet to really get your work out there, to test it, to use it as research and development and learn. All right. So I want to recap our five steps. Let's take a breath. <sighs> Cash flow resiliency. This is going to be a powerful skill set going forward because I believe we no longer live in a world where we can be on autopilot. And I think that's going to be true after this. And so as business owners, we can't take a ton of time to shift and move and change. I think we need to remain agile. And we need to remain present and focused and deeply attuned to the needs of our clients. So our first step is to acknowledge that you need to pivot, revise, or recalibrate what you're doing. The second step is to deeply clarify how your client's needs may have shifted and how their priorities may have readjusted, given that they're now in the daily blender and grind of whatever it is that's changed in their household they have a new set of backyard problems. What are those? And how is what you do the remedy for that? Which takes us to step three, designing a potent offer that is much needed, that is deeply needed. You're going to know what this is, right? That is that thing that's resonant, that's helpful, that's supportive. Again, I'm really encouraging more shorter end things I don't know if people want to commit to a six week thing right now. Maybe they do. I'm, I'm, you check it out for yourself. I'm not saying I always say the truth. I'm, I'm suggesting ideas. I think we want to make things accessible, fast, fun, friendly, light, powerful, useful, transformative, and doesn't require a ton of heavy lifting from us because we need to manage our own self-care in the process and stay aligned in the process, right? And Designing these potent offers, I think you can do it in a couple hours once you're really clear on what your clients' needs and how their priorities have shifted. That'll be easy to do. Okay, and then the fourth thing is really diving into how your clients think and feel and translate that into empathetic and compassionate messaging on social media, on your sales pages, and how you engage with them in a sales conversation. Really bringing in that care, that heart-centeredness, continuing to be a leader, but coming down off the mountain and being very empathetic and compassionate and knowing that you might be met with more resistance and a little bit more sense of fear and scarcity from your clients or new clients than you're used to. And so just be ready for that and don't take it personally. No personalizing, okay? We're just working people through this. And the fifth and last step is to be creative with your pricing right now. Find new models that maybe you've never used before. Offer partial scholarships. Offer shelter-in-place prices. Launch something and call it a pilot, right? Say it. I normally, I have an out offer out there that I say is normally, the, the regular price for this is $2,250, and that's true. The shelter-in-place price, because we're going to move fast, is $1,000, and that's true. I'm also offering a partial scholarship for people that, that meet the requirements, and I'm going to donate 25% of the proceeds. So be creative with your pricing. Feel into what's the right thing for you to do. So I thank you for being here today. And my last tip that I want to give you is move forward with bold, loving optimism. Be willing to be a richly abundant woman who is out there in the world giving your gifts, helping, and serving at the same time, tending to your own financial self-care. I hope this was a powerful conversation with you, for you about cash flow resiliency. I have a free offer for you at creatingcash.net, 10 videos on how to create cash flow in challenging times. If you want to go do that, go do that. It'll walk you through this in even more depth. I can't wait to hear from you. And I look forward to being with you again. Thank you so much for listening. I'm Julie Steelman.